Hi, I'm Steve, you're watching Gear Stuff and Things, and today we're gonna do a little Pepsi taste test challenge between the analog and digital world. For the video today, I've enlisted the help of my sister-in-law, Morgan. So without further delay, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so for the challenge today, we're gonna to have three separate rigs. One is a Mesa dual rectifier into a 212 cabinet that is mic'd with a SIN 609. And number two is the Line 6 Helix, more specifically the Line 6 HX Stomp into a Seymour Duncan Power Stage 170, also into that same 212 mic with the SIN 609. The third rig is going to be just the Line 6 HX Stomp Direct using an IR. Also for the challenge today, there's gonna to be two separate riffs utilizing each of the three rigs, and I'm gonna leave it up to you and Morgan to blindly figure out which is which. So let's turn it over to Morgan and get this challenge started. Hey guys, my name is Morgan, and Steven is my brother-in-law, um, and he's asked me to help with a fun little Pepsi taste challenge experiment with a couple of different uh, sounds both real and not for guitar. The idea is is that I'm sort of going blind into listening to six different samples and I have to sort of guess based on what I'm hearing uh, which is going to be which. Um, so this is going to be like a fun little thing. So I should also mention too, some of you may know me as uh, the lead singer and guitarist of the band Kitty and I also uh, am the lead singer of Car Chaos. Um, but uh, yeah, Steven is part of my family, so this is a fun little, neat little thing here to do. So I'm going to just jump right in and I'm going to play one of the samples and then I will uh, take a listen. You can see my reaction in real time here um, and uh, I'll sort of discuss what I'm hearing and I don't know, hopefully I, I won't make an ass of myself. We'll see what happens though. Um, so the first uh, is number one, MP3, so simple one. So, I don't know if I should be like doing this as, as it's playing, but so I guess I'm gonna have to listen to all three of them and be like, well, this one sounds like this. That one, I mean, it's all heavy because it's like a heavy riff and it sounds awesome. There was something a little almost thin about it. Um, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not a very technical person, but there was something just a little, a little thin about it. We're going for sample number two. Same riff different setup. two might be with a real cabinet um like i mentioned before i don't really have much experience with the whole ir thing um but i i do understand how it works and like you know reading up on it and whatnot but i know that technology these days gets so uh out of control that now it's like i'm here and i'm like i'm not really sure what's real and what's a simulation we're in the matrix um but that one i i think that one might have been with a real, at least a real cabinet. Simple, great. So 
this is gonna be my guess. And I'm just gonna like go back to my notes so I know each combination. So number three, I think, is the Mesa with the 212. Um, I feel like there's, there, it sounds like there was something a little more alive about it. Um, and personally for me, I have played uh, live with Mesa cabinets, dual, triple, you know, Road King um, for the, the majority of my uh, live concert playing career. Um, who knows though, like this could totally be like, well, Morgan, you're full of shit. You have no idea what you're talking about. And that's cool too. Um, but I definitely think that of those, the first three, sample number three is the Mesa with the 212. I think that number two is going to be the Helix with the 212. And I think number one is actually going to be the Helix, Line 6 Helix with the IR. Um, so those are my guesses for the first round one. And we're gonna go into round two in just a second here. So a different riff. So sample number four. say that definitely technology has come so far um, that it almost in a lot of cases is it's not um, something that the human ear can differentiate between um, I mean I'm sure that there are some people that are highly skilled and very specialized in this type of thing like personally I'm not much of a gear crazy kind of person like I've always just been very straightforward I never really fucked around with you know many pedals or effects it was always just like let's get this straight metal sound happening and that always just kind of happened with you know your classic like massive boogie triple uh 412 setup um so like I said I'm not really I'm not really super technical but in in some of the cases it is hard to tell the difference but at the same time there are little things that it's like, mm, this does, there's like a, almost a thinness to it. Um, but like for the most part, like most people are not gonna notice. And I know that, you know, a lot of like really amazing uh, and very popular bands, you know, use a lot of this type of thing and their, their recordings sound great. So, um, so yeah, that was number four. We're gonna go back and Listen to number five, same riff, number five. This is gonna be really fucking hard. This is impossible. The next one, I'm gonna go to six and then I might have to like go through them again. I don't know if like, maybe I just like, um, yeah, maybe maybe my mind is like a little screwed up, but we're gonna go, we're try number six and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you my. were still the real cabinet and then the first one was the helix with the ir again um but it's hard to tell like uh, interchangeably which might be the the mesa and which might be the line six helix with the 
yeah, with the uh, with the cabinet. So it's gonna be. I still think that number four is the uh, Helix with the IR, but five and six are gonna be like really hard to try to figure out. Let me see. I'm listening to number five again. Okay, now that I am hearing this, I think, I think number five is the Mesa, and number six is the Line 6 with the 212. Um, and I could be totally full of shit, uh, and maybe I'm just hearing things, but uh, there's like a certain like weird kind of like under like, under chug about a Mesa that uh, it's hard, I feel like it's hard to like maybe replicate. I don't know. I, I'm sure that there are lots of people that are, you know, scientists that fucking work on this shit too. So um, yeah, so for round two, I still think the first one is the Helix with the IR. Number two, which it was sample number five, is uh, the Mesa with the 212, and then sample number six is the Helix with the 212. Um, so I guess uh, that's really it. Like I, I've taken a listen to everything. I sort of made my guesses and I think we're probably gonna do a little follow-up afterwards um, so that you can be like, surprise, you have no idea what you're fucking talking about. It's gonna be awesome and hilarious too, probably. Um, but this was like a really fun little exercise um, in, you know, uh, I don't know, even ear training in a weird way, like, you know, because it is interesting that uh, with, like I said, the advancements of technology, like people, are having a harder time trying to decipher what is, you know, like an old school cabinet setup or, you know, something that's like, you know, a plug-in or, you know, a digital head uh, and not even with a cabinet, you know, the IR is a very interesting and, and weird kind of thing, um, but technology is amazing. Um, so uh, thank you, Stephen, for asking me to do this and having me um, play this fun little Pepsi challenge. I guess we'll find out if I know my shit or it'll be like, surprise, technology is way better than your ear these days. So thanks again. Um, it was great to do this and I'll see you guys soon. All right, and now that you've had a chance to check out all of the examples and hang out with Morgan for a bit, let's give her a call so I can let you know as well as her know which of these rigs was which. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. So we'll jump into it then. Awesome. All right, so let me pull up the file here. The first thing you had as the Helix with the IR. And that one was the actual Mesa with the 212 cap. <laughs> a lot it takes to determine that was a lie. Um, <laughs> obviously, I... Um, it's weird because I thought that that one sounded really thin. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's just... Like, the quality of like some of the technology, you know what I mean? I don't know, it's really weird. Right. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, like it's if I hadn't uh, recorded it myself, I wouldn't know either. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the second one, uh, you had you got it right. It is the helix, <laughs> the helix with the cap. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I mean, I I really wouldn't have like any idea how I would have known. I just kind of felt like maybe you had a good guess. <laughs> it turned out to be a very solid guess. <laughs> Uh, and the third one yeah. you had as the the Mesa with the cab, which is the one you thought sounded the most like the real thing, and it was the Helix with an internal IR. So. Which is incredible. Like, it just, it's a testament to, like, how amazing that stuff really is, I guess. It's like you cannot, I, I mean, I couldn't tell the difference. No, it's definitely come a long way. Pretty, yeah. pretty crazy how much the technology has advanced.
Yeah, for sure. It's wild. So uh, I guess we'll just go straight into the other three uh, with the other riff. So the fourth example you had as the Helix with the IR, and that mm-hmm. one was the Helix with the real cap. Cool. Well, I that's with 50%, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, it's uh, it's tricky, especially when you're going back and forth between the few. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, oh, you have number five, which you got correct, which was the Mesa, the real Mesa with the cab. Right. And I think when we were, because we did sort of, like, go over some of the ideas and whatnot, I think with that one, I felt like because of the riff that you had played with it, it, like, kind of had, like, a little, like, underneath it that made me think that that's that it was the real thing but other than that like i said i I, really hard to tell yeah well you nailed that one um it's weird that like this the subtleties are so so little you know between things that i don't know it's it's kind of mind-boggling really uh let's see i didn't you listened to that one twice in the video yeah which I was like, I need to be sure that I think that that's what, what it is. <laughs> yeah, you, you nailed it. Uh, it's it's interesting to me that the first pass, you thought that one was something else, and then the second pass, you nailed it. Yeah, it's, it is weird. But like I said, I feel like there was something about the riff that you were playing, like there was a lot more tugging in it than the first one, and I, I felt like maybe it kind of like let me hear it in the way that I feel like I would know what it would sound like. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making this shit up. <laughs> well, maybe you've been playing those amps long enough. That's the whole reason I asked you to do it, because I know you have experience with them. So. Yeah, sure, because like, I have no experience with any of the other any of the other stuff. But it does kind of make me feel good knowing that at least I kind of know what, you know, a uh, natural Mesa head and cab sounds like. Right. Yeah. I guess it's kind of cool. On the other end of it is that if for some reason you had to use one of these other things as a fallback, you know it would work. Yeah, for sure. Like pretty light traveling as well. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, well, we'll get into the last one. And uh, so you had that one as the Helix with the real cab. And that one, again, was the Helix with the internal IR. Oh, it's crazy. Like, literally had no idea. Um, the Yeah, the IR is definitely something that's like, like, yeah, I couldn't, I can't cancel the difference at all. So the biggest difference between the IR I used and the real cab that I <clears throat> used is the speaker combination. Right. And I'm sure there are people that are going to watch the video and get pissed at me because it's not exactly the same. So I'm not using, right. using an IR that's the same. Uh, we have the real Mesa 412, but I didn't have it like set up in a way that would require me going up and down the stairs over and over again. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> but I thought that I got close enough with the examples that it really wasn't necessary. For sure, yeah. But the IR that is mimicked inside of the Helix is um, it's an aftermarket one from this company called ML Sound Labs, but it's it is a an oversized Mesa 412 that's been you know, might to create that impulse response. So it's the same thing as if, theoretically, it's the same thing as if I went and used the oversized 412 that is in the basement here and mic'd everything. But I have everything in this tiny little room, so it's not really. But, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's that's really the only difference. So, the you know, the cab that it's emulating isn't exactly the same cab, but with a bit of tweaking between the digital and it's almost indistinguishable indistinguishable regardless of which cab you're using yeah yeah and like i feel like this is definitely uh a testament to that like not like i feel like i've ever really been like that much i'm not really much of like a gearhead and i'm not really much of like you know uh i don't feel like i have that great of an ear but uh so it's not like I was coming into this expecting to be like, I'm going to be able to guess all of these. Like I had, I knew that there was going to be like a pretty, pretty large margin of error, but it is interesting that I did get the mess of like at least the head parts for both. Correct. And, um, but yeah, like it, it is almost indistinguishable, um, for pretty much all of them. Like 
they they all sound fantastic like they all would work well at live they all would work well in the studio so it's like just take your pick right right well just so everyone knows the head i'm using i believe is your head isn't it the yeah one, the one's here, so yeah uh, I use the settings that were marked on it, which I assume by you or a tech at some yeah. point. So I matched all of that stuff inside of the Helix as well. So everything is literally how you would have set it up. Yeah, like that would be a, like the Kitty Live, the Kitty Live setup basically. So good to know I at least got the, the <laughs> actual like set live setup like correct. Oh my god, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I did it. I mean, I think all around is a testament to your ear having been used to using that amp for many years and that it's a testament to the technology that it's at a place where it's pretty indistinguishable. It is pretty, pretty incredible. And it, uh, I, I'm definitely impressed and, uh, and shocked. Yeah. Like they all are so similar. It's, they're all, it's, it's all really super, super incredible. So awesome. Yeah. Well, I uh, I really appreciate you uh, working with me on this. So. Yeah, of course. Thanks for asking me, and thanks for having me. I think this was like a fun little exercise, and I, I really enjoyed it. So. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, and I'll uh, I'll wrap the video up, and then we'll, you know, get off the yeah. phone proper. But. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Thank you uh, for you know participating. For sure. All right, and that is the video for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that bell notification so that YouTube lets you know every time I post a new video here. As always, thanks so much for stopping by. And again, thank you so, so much to Morgan for helping me out with this little taste test challenge. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, it's been me. It's been you. It was also Morgan. This is Gear Stuff and Things. <laughs>